In the first video, we've looked at using VBA to create multiple shapes. In this video, we're looking at how to position those shapes where we want to position them without doing that manually. So how can we use VBA to position shapes? Let's get into the spreadsheet. So we can see what we did in the first video. I've tidied up the shapes a bit and we want one shape per sheet. We've got 11 shapes here. So we've got the right number of shapes. That's definitely, it's definitely a good starting point, but clearly the way the shapes are positioned is not helpful to us. So how can we position those shapes? Well, we can move them around manually. I can use the Alt key, you know, to lock them in, you know, and that, and that would not be too bad. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind uh, with 11 shapes, but I've, I've done jobs like this with 25 shapes or more. So how can we do this programmatically? How can we move these shapes, line them up really nicely without having to do any kind of mouse pad work or anything annoying like that? So let's have a look uh, at the options. Uh, I'm going to open the Visual Basic Editor uh, straight away, just get this sized properly. There we go. Okay, and it's important to understand Excel knows uh, where all of the objects are uh, within the spreadsheet. For example, uh, it knows where the cells are, it knows how wide each of the columns are, so it can work out where a cell needs to display, needs to appear. And it's the same with shapes. Excel knows where the shapes are on the spreadsheet when you move a shape around somewhere deep inside Excel, a database is updating, kind of noting where you've moved the shape to. So Excel knows all this. We've just got to access that information and then, and, and then manipulate it. That's exactly what Visual Basic is going to allow us to do. So let's get started with another uh, routine and let's call it Move Shapes. And then how about uh, this line of code? You may not have seen it before. Um, but let's say shapes1.top, shapes1.top. And then let's get that to display in a message box. Okay, so let's talk about this line of code. Might look a bit obscure if you've never seen it before. So shapes one in brackets. So there we're using the shapes directory to reference uh, the shape. So in the same way, we could use this line of code, uh, sheets one dot select. This line of code would select the first sheet. That's we're using the sheets directory and saying select the first sheet uh, in the workbook. Um, and that's different to saying sheets dashboard dot select. We can just say select the first sheet. We can do the same with shapes. Excel has a directory of shapes in the sheets. And we can say to Excel, just select the first shape, regardless of the name, just select the first shape. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Shapes one, that means the first shape in the directory, which is usually the first shape that was um, created in the spreadsheet. Uh, so just to, just to illustrate this point, let's say activesheet.shapes1.select. And we're going to execute this line of code. And just watch on in the spreadsheet. Just Let's just see what happens. I'm going to use the F8 key to step into the code. Okay, Excel telling me it doesn't like this line of code. Absolutely right. Okay. Okay, so F8 key. Okay, I'm not sure if you saw that. I'm just going to do it again. Um, so we're expecting uh, this shape, which is the first shape. We're expecting that to be selected. So I'm just stepping into and we can see that that shape is selected. So Excel is selecting the first shape in the directory. So this way of using directories, shapes1.select, sheets1.select, cells12.select, a great way to work with objects without having to use the name um, of the object. And in this case, we're using it to select a shape. So that's, uh, that's working well. Um, I'm going to adapt this line of code. And then let's say message box. So this is going to flash up some information for us. Shapes1.top. Okay, so this top property it's going to give us some positional information about the shape. It's going to give us some information about where the shape is positioned in the spreadsheet. So once again, uh, let's just step into this code. Okay, we have a message box flashing up there with the number 30 in. 
I guess, what does that mean? What do you think that means? Well, it's referring to where the top of this shape is. And as we can see, just going to exit this code, the top of this shape is, you know, approximately in line with the bottom of the second row. And the second row is of height 15. And the first row is also 15 in height. 15 plus 15 is 30. So that shape is positioned, you know, 30 units uh, down the spreadsheet. So that's the information that the top property is giving us. Let's just go through it again. Uh, it's, it's, it's telling us in terms of vertical orientation where the shape uh, is positioned. So just to test that, let's move the shape down. Then let's just run this code again using the F8 key to step into the code. It's now 95.25. That's because I moved it down. Okay, very interesting. I'm going to just put the, code, the shape back there just, just with the undo shortcut, Control Z. Um, and what else, what else have we got? Well, we've got the top property. So that gives us information about vertical orientation. What about horizontal uh, orientation? So what, do you th what word might help us there if we're talking about horizontal orientation? Well, another way to think about horizontal orientation is left and right. And we have the left property that we can work with. Um, so I'm going to run this code again. And then let's see what happens. Okay, it's given us 48. So that's telling us that uh, the first shape is positioned 48 units across the spreadsheet in terms of horizontal orientation. Let's test that again. I'm going to move this shape across. So if it was 48 before, that looks like about, I don't know, 100, something like that, 136, a little bit more. But we can see we've moved it across. That number's uh, got bigger. So it's giving us information about the vertical and the horizontal position of the shape. So it's all there in Excel. All of that information is there. We've just got to learn how to extract it and to work with it. So why is all this interesting for us? Well, it's interesting because we want our shapes to line up really nicely and we don't want to have to do that manually. So now let's look at how we can use this information, the top and the left property, to help position uh, our shapes. Okay, so let's move the first shape back to where we want to start um, that looks about right, where, where we want to start our navigation. In fact, I'm not sure if that is right. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. Okay, so we've got two columns which are uh, two wide, and then three rows which I think are 15 wide. That's right. Okay, so two and 15, just going back to the same sheet. So I want to replicate that structure on this sheet. So I'm just going to adjust uh, the column width here. And then adjust the row height, make sure this is 15. Okay, that looks good. Uh, a quick point to note here is it's best to set the property of the shape so that the shape doesn't move or size with the cells. The default, the default setting for the shape is that it will move or size with cells. So if you make a column wider, the shape will also get wider. I don't know why that's the default setting. It's rarely very helpful with shapes, but we can avoid that. Uh, by going to size and properties just outside of your screenshot, size and properties, and then over on the right outside of your screenshot, um, you can go to the properties uh, menu there and click don't move or size with cells. And that, that's the, generally the best way to work with shapes. So that means when we adjust the column width, the shape isn't going to move or get wider, something like that. So that's just right click on the shape, size and properties, and then the uh, properties menu. Okay, so we've replicated the structure we've got on the sheets here, and then we want the shape to appear about here, which is in cell C3. So I'm going to move back to our sheet. Uh, cell C3, I'm going to put the shape there. I'm using the Alt key to lock it into place, so I've got that Alt key held down, just releasing the mouse again. Going to check back on the other sheet. Yep, C3, that's perfect. That's exactly where we want the shape to be. Okay, so we've got shape one positioned there, uh, and then we want to position the other shapes in relation to shape one. We want the other shapes to be uh, in a line in terms of vertical orientation. 
that in terms of horizontal position, rather, not orientation, position, in terms of uh, horizontal position, we want each shape to be uh, a little bit further along. So that's what we're going to try to do now, uh, programmatically. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we've already been talking about directories, so Excel understands, or collections you might call it, Excel understands collections of objects, Excel understands the shapes in a worksheet as a collection, and we can loop through that collection or directory to do something. Um, so again, let's go for uh, a loop to work through the shapes. And we know we have 11 shapes in the spreadsheet, in this sheet anyway. So let's say counter equals uh, 2 to 11. Okay, and then next counter. So we've opened the loop and closed the loop. Okay, I'm just going to move this sub to the top of the module so that you can see it in your screenshot. There we go. Um, so we've got four next loop there. I'm going to indent that code so I can clearly see the loop. And then we're going to use the variable to reference the shape. Okay, we don't want to select the same shape each time. We actually want to increase that number, the number we're using to select the shape. We want to increase that by one each time. And a for next loop is going to be perfect for doing that. The for next loop increases the value of the variable one time by one every time it goes through the loop. That's perfect for selecting all of the shapes in the spreadsheet. So let's try to do that. You're going to have to say active sheet. Active sheet, sheet dot shapes, counter, and then we've got a top uh, property and we have a right property. So I'm just going to leave that a left property, sorry. Okay, so using these two lines of code, we'll be able to do our positioning. So what should that top property be? Well, uh, we want it to be. I mean, I think 15 is going to be good, but I'm just going to check that. Um, so I've written that line of code. That's going to tell me the top property, so the vertical orientation of our first shape, the first shape we've put in there. So I'm just going to go through uh, the code here. Okay, 15. So that number 15, we want all of the shapes to be in line so we can shape set all of the shapes um, top property to 15. So this this should line them up. I've just put an inverted comma next to that line of code making it green, making it an annotation so Excel will ignore this line of code. Okay while I'm at it I'm going to put option explicit at the top of the module. Really should have done this in the beginning. Good pro coding practice. That means that Excel will check the variables before I begin for any spelling mistakes or anything. So we can uh, highlight that error straight away. Right, let's play this uh, macro. What we're expecting to happen is for all of the shapes to line up uh, in a line, uh, vertically at least. So let's play. Okay, there we go. So we can see all of the shapes have lined up there. Uh, so we're well on the way. And that was much easier than having to manually line up the shapes. So this is a good start. I don't need this message box line of code anymore. Just get rid of that. Okay, so, so the right property is going to be a little bit more difficult, but let's start the left property, sorry. Do excuse me. Okay. Let's start by establishing the left property of the first shape. So I'm gonna step into the code. Message box, okay, 28.5. Okay. So let's use that, 28.5. There we go, just gonna reactivate this line of code. Okay, so what will we expect to happen here? Well, it's gonna loop through all of the shapes and set the top and left properties to the same value for every shape. So what's that gonna look like? Well, they're gonna all pile on top of each other and I'm gonna play the code now. And it's gonna look like there's only one shape there, but there's actually lots of shapes piled on top of each other. Okay, so, but 
It's good for us because we're controlling, controlling the position, using the left property to control the position there. So I want to spread these shapes out. Um, so on each shape, I want to go a little bit further along the spreadsheet. Okay. So how might we do that? I'm going to put an underscore in here. Well, what can we use in the loop to help us increase that value for each shape, to increase the value each time we go through the loop? That's what we're trying to do in English. Well, there's something in the loop that increases every time we go through the loop. What's that? That's the counter variable. Yeah, the counter variable is controlling the whole loop. Each time it goes through the loop, it increases in value by one. So let's say counter multiplied by, I think 20 should be about right. There we go. So now the position of each shape is going to be 28.5. So remember, that's how far we got to get to our first shape. So that's like an initial buffer. And then after that, whatever the value of counter is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, not 1, from 2 to 11, multiplied by 20. So that value is going to increase every time we go through the loop. That should have the effect of pushing the shapes across uh, the sheet. That should be the idea, but this being VBA could, could go dramatically wrong. But let's just play the code. Okay, looks good. Okay, so what's happened there? We've got really nice spacing between the shapes. I love that. But we've got a space that's a bit too big here. I think I know what's happening. I think we've just got to decrease the value of counter by one. I'm going to put that in brackets again. Decrease the value of counter by one because we can see this first shape here, shape two, it's gone too far. It's gone too far across. That's because we haven't quite controlled the variable with enough precision. So if we just de decrease the value of counter by one, that's going to shift it back across and means it should be in just about the right place. So always save the spreadsheet uh, before you try it. And then that looks good. OK, we've got really nice alignment there. Um, I'm just going to experiment a little bit. So if we wanted a bit more spacing, let's try 30. Let's see, see what that looks like. Just play that. OK, we can now see we've got a little bit more spacing. For me, that's a little bit too much spacing. So maybe 25. Yeah, I think that's going to do the job uh, really nicely. OK, and there's our shapes beautifully aligned. Yes, we've had to write some Visual Basic code, but you know, so much more fun working with code and getting it to work than having to use the mouse and you know, manually position things much better to learn the code and then you know it's with you for life and you'll be able to do it uh, many many times so we've learned some great skills there um, so we've talked about the top and the left property how they, we can use those to help position shapes then again we've built in a loop and then uh, use the counter variable that increases every time we go through the loop use that variable to control the position of the shapes and to kind of move them along the spreadsheet so really neat Powerful technique, you know, we've done 11 shapes, I've done this with 50, and you can very easy scale it up, super powerful. Okay, so what's next? Um, well, the captions are not particularly helpful. We've just got D in each shape at the moment, and ideally we'd have a caption uh, for each shape. And then, and then the next step would be to make sure we can navigate you. So if we click on those shapes, we want it to navigate to a sheet. So that's what we'll be doing in the next couple of videos, uh, changing the caption so that there's a meaningful caption in each shape, and then looking at the actual navigation. So we click on a button and it takes us to a particular sheet. I hope you'll join me in the next video.